Live starts now. Good evening and welcome to News Watch 12 at 5. I'm Jessica Jukic. Alex Lazary is dro has dropped out of the Senate race less than two weeks before the Wisconsin primary. Lazary made the announcement this afternoon and is now endorsing Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes. Lazary had poured more than $12 million into his campaign. Polling data previously showed the Milwaukee Bucks executive was in second place behind Barnes. I am proud to be able to stand up here uh, and support him. He's been a friend for a really long time and I am excited for in a few months to be able to not just call him a friend but to be able to call him Senator Barnes because this stakes of this election couldn't be higher. Les withdrawing puts Lieutenant Governor Barnes in a position to win the August 9th primary and face off against Republican U.S. Senator Ron Johnson. Lazary is the second person to drop out of the Senate race this week following Tom Nelson's announcement on Monday. The Democratic Senate race is now down to Barnes and Sarah Godlewski. It was a warm day, but there are some showers in the forecast. Conrad Sapinski is tracking those rain chances. Yeah, so we got a good amount of sunlight out there at the moment, but we had some showers earlier today and more and more rounds all throughout the state right now. This is all spotted showers, so no crazy heavy storms at that. No severe weather at the moment. There is a little heavier uh, batch of showers and thunderstorms just north of Rhinelander, but overall we will not be looking too bad. This is not going to be a long lasting system, just some on and off showers. As indicated here in Canada, the main part of the low still spinning counterclockwise. Those showers will continue to move south and east and finally make it into Rhinelander by later on tonight into tomorrow. More on the spotted end, but temperatures are a little bit on the cooler side all across the state. Some 60s uh, where the rain is coming down, a couple of 70s closer to Rhinelander. Our average is closer to 80 and tomorrow will be well below that into the upper 60s and some 60s down south in the southern part of the state. But later on tonight, we'll continue to cool off into the 50s. Jessica. Thank you, Conrad. The Wisconsin Department of Justice has reached a more than $4 billion settlement with opioid maker T Tiva Pharmaceuticals. Tiva will pay a maximum of $4.25 billion over 13 years. The drug manufacturer is accused of promoting potent rapid onset fentanyl products for non-cancer patients and downplaying the risk of addiction. The pharmaceutical company will also provide up to $1.2 billion in naloxone, which is used to counteract overdoses. The company's announcement comes amid negotiations with attorney generals in 12 states over its distribution of, and marketing of opioids. Wisconsin is investing in behavioral health treatment. Governor Tony Evers and the Department of Health Services awarded more than $2.5 million in telehealth grants to 27 mental health and substance use treatment providers. The grants are made possible through the American Rescue Plan Act and will help remove lo location and technology barriers. The goal is to create private behavioral health telehealth stations for people to set up virtual appointments in central locations like community centers, food pantries, homeless shelters, schools, and libraries. The Federal Reserve raised its benchmark interest rates by 75 basis points or three quarters of a percent on Wednesday. It's the second time in a row the Fed has raised rates by three quarters of a percent percentage point and the fourth year in and fourth rate increase this year. By raising interest rates, the Fed is hoping to reduce overall demand in the economy, which in turn should slow down price growth. While addressing the rate increase, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell emphasized the board's goal to bring inflation down to 2%, adding that the Fed anticipates an ongoing increase in the target range for the federal funds rate will be appropriate. Summer temperatures are rising and so are people's electric bills. Now the Biden administration is launching a new pilot program that will help use solar power to bring down utility costs. The new initiatives are mostly targeted towards low income renters and families and it would allow people in subsidized rental or low income housing to apply for community solar energy. The energy from solar farms would be sent to the housing units to help lower the cost of utilities. The program is aiming to power 5 million homes by 2025. Officials say this could save $1 billion while expanding clean energy. 
Today, law enforcement are serving the community, but not in a way you might think. Pizza Ranch teamed up up with the Oneida County Sheriff's Office to bring to life its annual Christmas in July fundraiser. It's hosted by Police Lights of Christmas to help raise money for gift cards that they will hand out later this winter. It's a partnership. It's us joining with Pizza Ranch to thank them for willing to get involved with this organization because in turn, we are able to help our community at Christmas time. Law enforcement were busy all day bussing tables and serving customers. By spending time with the people they serve, this event creates an opportunity for them to get involved with the community. It's not a typical law enforcement role. We're not doing enforcement. We're not called to a bad situation. We're here for fun. So it's really one of the greatest things about the job is you're just interacting with people in a very pleasant opportunity. The fundraiser will run until 8 p.m. today, and if you aren't able to make it out tonight, there will be a similar event at Culver's in October. A building which sat empty in downtown Medford for the past 40 years is now getting a much-needed facelift. Newswatch 12's Kyle Pazorski explains. In 1980, a fire burned inside the Brucker Building on Main Street, Medford, which was then left to the elements for more than 40 years. I, I think that... Um, through time, there's just been some disinvestment in downtown. Doug Gassick, a native resident of Medford, recently moved back two years ago. I just wanted to be a part of the legacy of Medford, and I, and I think downtowns create the legacy in a community. So for me, this was the perfect place. Earlier this year, Gassick, along with the city of Medford, were awarded $86,900 to develop the property which he hopes will be a shining example of what individuals can do in small towns like Medford. We were able to work with Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation for their uh, community development initiative grant program for this building, which really focuses on injecting money into, into projects to help revitalize downtowns. Missy Hughes from WEDC agrees that the building is worth reinvestment for the city of 4,000. What's really important for the whole Wisconsin economy is to have strong communities. By providing these resources, we're able to help the city solve a problem and move a project forward that will end up really revitalizing their whole main street. Gastic and his family's business hopes to finish restoration work within the next year to become a winery and upstairs two-bedroom apartment. Reporting in Medford, Kyle Pozorski, Newswatch 12. A local daycare is giving kids a green thumb. Coming up on Newswatch 12, how they're teaching kids healthy habits that can last a lifetime. That's right after weather here on Newswatch 12. This portion of News Watch 12 is brought to you by Slumberland. Outlaw. That's what can happen because of the Supreme Court and Ron Johnson's with them. The Supreme Court's decision ended abortion services in Wisconsin, and Ron Johnson supported the decision, making it illegal in Wisconsin, even in cases of rape and incest. Doctors can be prosecuted. A woman's right to choose criminalized. Johnson even said, if you don't like it, you can move. Ron Johnson's not for us. SMP is responsible for the content of this ad. Don't miss the Oneida County Fair, July 28th through the 31st at Pioneer Park in Rhinelander. Free admittance and parking. Opening day Thursday at 4 p.m. featuring John Greiner's Swing Shift Big Band, 15-piece orchestra at 7 p.m. Friday Kids Day with contests and family fun all day long. CT's Deli's Famous Fish Fry. Live music from Santee and Son and Chicken Wire Empire. Saturday Lumberjack Show. Two great tribute bands featuring the music of the Eagles at 5 p.m. and Fleetwood Mac at 8 p.m. Carnival, vendors, and food. We'll see you at the fair. Stony Creek Home and Garden in Minocqua carries a great selection of stylish and extremely durable outdoor furniture. View the finest brands such as Lloyd Flanders, Hollywood, Ebel, Jensen, Seaside Casual, and Jensen Outdoor and at competitive prices. Create the outdoor room of your dreams. Liven up your home with flowers, trees, shrubs, ceramic planters, and many more greenhouse wonders. View Stony Creek Home and Garden's unique items just south of Minocqua on Highway 51. Are you looking for someone to help make retirement planning a little easier? I'm Cole Bruner from Bushka Retirement Solutions, Bushka Wealth Management, and Legacy Tax Solutions. Between our three companies, there's a lot we can do to make your retirement planning process less stressful. By creating a holistic retirement plan that incorporates investment management, income planning, tax planning, as well as health insurance and Medicare planning, you can retire with more confidence and peace of mind. Call us today or go online to schedule your complimentary review. 
And my economic plan is moving this country in a better direction. What planet is he living on? Record gas prices, 40-year high inflation, costing families five grand more for their necessities. Sorry, Joe, that's the wrong direction. Here on planet Earth, Senator Johnson voted against Biden's massive deficit spending that sparked inflation. And he passed tax cuts to help Wisconsin families survive the economic turmoil caused by Democrats. I'm Ron Johnson, and I approve this message. All right, so the shot behind me is from Rhinelander. It looks like there's a lot of cloud cover, but there is a lot of spots that are actually under some partly cloudy skies, pretty much like our station. Lots of cloud cover downtown, and then just outside of downtown, we have a good amount of sunshine, but those showers will continue to become scattered. There is a stronger band of showers just north of Rhinelander, producing a good amount of rain, but folks, this is all scattered. So if you are caught in one, don't worry, it is a quick hitter. And all of this right here spinning counterclockwise in Canada right now, that low pressure system will continue to stick around into tomorrow, which for us means more scattered showers throughout the overnight hours tonight. And then same thing into tomorrow before we finally clear up by Thursday night into Friday and even our weekend looks nice and clear. So just today and tomorrow we got to deal with a little bit of rain, not a big rainmaker, just a trace across some locations, maybe a quarter of an inch closer to Tomahawk and in some isolated locations where those rain bands are a little bit on the heavier and that will continue into tonight. But those dew points aren't actually looking too bad. Some 50s, a couple of 60s showing up here for dew points, which means everybody is feeling pretty comfortable out there and not feeling too sticky, too muggy outside. So that is a really good sign out there with those temperatures being close to average, maybe slightly below our average of around 80. We have a 77 degree reading here in Rhinelander, a little bit cooler in Eagle River as they're coming in at 68 degrees. That is because they are caught in a rain shower, which is really cooling things off around real fast besides Green Bay as they're still in those low to mid 80s so everybody is looking pretty good out there tomorrow though a whole different story as our high temperature is only going to be in the upper 60s so a little cooler out there tomorrow cooler on friday some slightly below average but look what happens by the weekend and by next week, everybody is going to be warm. We're going to have some 80s back by the weekend, slightly cooler by Monday and Tuesday, some upper 70s, still near average. But Wednesday, that's when the heat comes in, some mid 80s. So it is going to get hot by Wednesday. But tonight will be cooler once again, some slightly below average temperatures in the low to mid 50s with partly cloudy skies and some on and off showers. Maybe a thunderstorm if you're caught in one. Be careful because the rain will be on the heavier end tomorrow. Same thing under partly cloudy skies. A few showers. Temperatures will continue to be on the cooler end as our seven day outlook brought to you by Northwest Furniture and Mattress does show a nice weekend. Lots of sunshine, temperatures in the 80s, and next week looks pretty good with temperatures near average or slightly above. Jessica? Thank you, Conrad. Emergency crews are investigating after a home explosion this morning in Hopkins. Fire officials say two bodies have been recovered from the debris after an hours long search. NBC affiliate CARE 11 has learned from neighbors that an elderly couple lived at the residence. Hopkins fire crews and police were called out to the home at around 1015 this morning after a report of an explosion and fire. Crews are investigating the cause. The Department of Justice is investigating former President Donald Trump's actions as part of its criminal probe of efforts to overturn the 2020 election results. A DOJ official says the Justice Department has been asking questions about former President Trump's activities leading up to January 6th. However, the administration official was clear to point out that a criminal investigation of the former president has not been opened. Four people familiar with the matter said investigators are examining the former president's conversations and have seized phone records of key officials and aides in the Trump administration. They have questions. They have also asked questions about meetings Trump had leading into
into December 2020 and January 2021 during his pressure campaign on former Vice President Mike Pence to overturn the election and what instructions he gave his lawyers and advisors about fake electors. The Biden administration is working to keep European allies united against Russia after the country cuts gas supplies to the European Union. On Monday, Russia's state-owned gas company cut flows through its pipeline to Germany in half to just 20% of its capacity. A U.S. official says the move was retaliation for Western sanctions. On Tuesday, the White House sent the presidential coordinator for global energy to Europe to discuss contingency planning with the U.S. EU Energy Task Force. Senate lawmakers passed a $52 billion bill to boost the production of and semiconductors. Wednesday's vote received broad bipartisan support, passing 64 to 33. The legislation is aimed at addressing a semiconductor chip shortage. It also seeks to make the U.S. less reliant on other countries like China for manufacturing. Supporters also say the measure is important for national security as well. A House vote on the bill and the president's signature are still needed for it to be approved. The Oneida County Fair is just around the corner with thousands expected to attend. The organizers are fast at work preparing the venue. Rides, games, activities, live music and a bundle of fun is headed to Rhinelander. Executive Director Tom Barnett is keeping busy setting up the fair. He's excited to see the inviting happy atmosphere. The thing that brings me the most joy is when I walk the grounds or drive around on the grounds and I see the smiling uh, children running around, the parents, the adults having a good time, everyone just kind of bonding and getting together and forgetting about their cares and woes. Organizers starting started putting together the fair on Monday and are now just putting the final touches on the venue. They say more than a dozen volunteers have helped set up the event. A lot of heavy lifting and we couldn't do it with all kinds of wonderful volunteers. So we really appreciate everybody that's come out this week to help out. And we also really appreciate the support of local businesses and individuals for there wouldn't be a fair without their support. Although the start is almost here, more help is always appreciated during and after the weekend as well. The free fair begins tomorrow at 4 p.m. For more information, you can go to WJFW.com. At Terry's Treehouse, you can find the usual playground, toy area, and cafeteria, but what about a garden? Newswatch 12's Morgan Johnson tells us how an area daycare is using the outdoors to teach kids. Mm. To these kids, eating healthy is easy. So we're going to make a salad. And to Emily May King, serving healthy is a reward. I think pretty much every day in the last two weeks, we've um, been able to pick and eat. Today, the children at Terry's Treehouse got something a little special for lunch. This salad made from ingredients harvested in their backyard. Every day we walk in here, it's a, it's a new job, new task. Weeding, watering, and pruning is on the daily to-do list. And of course, collecting right, bounty, which is the out. children's okay. favorite. From the first seed to the last bite, the kids are learning. It's amazing how much they eat if they grow it. And um, it creates a healthy habit. Um, also, it gets families interested too in a hobby that is intergenerational. The garden started seven years ago. The idea was sparked when the treehouse greenhouse was built. Daisies, should we take some daisies for a salad? Since then, it's gotten bigger and better. Every year we have to restart, regrow, and so do our children. Emily May's goal isn't just to feed them healthy food, but to give them lifelong habits and relationships. I have so many students that come back year after year and they said I'm growing a garden at the home or I never liked carrots until I saw a carrot flower and that is a huge motivator. Reporting for Newswatch 12 in Woodruff, I'm Morgan Johnson. Seen Tim Michaels phony ads about special interests? I'm not beholden to them. The truth? Tim Michaels is one of them. He was a leader of a special interest group lobbying for gas tax hikes. Michaels sat on the board as they repeatedly pushed higher gas taxes and automatic yearly gas tax hikes. Michaels' company bankrolled a special interest who even backed Tony Evers' gas tax increase. Special interests, higher taxes, the real Tim Michaels. Uh, one thing that surprised me about the RVA is they want to do school, whereas it was kind of a, a struggle before. All of the educators, the staff, the therapists, the specialists, everybody is so knowledgeable. And my favorite thing is that we all work together as a team for the kids. I really feel like we're partners with the RVA. I just love it so much. <laughs> I know I've said that before, but like I love the RVA. <laughs> 
at Mole Lake Casino and Lodge get great deals at check-in. Thank you very much. Great deals at the Players Club. Great times in the lounge with your friends when you're ready to party. And specials all week long at the Cafe Le Newman, like our Friday night fit for a king fish fry. It's great to be the king. Mole Lake Casino and Lodge, where everyone is treated like a king. Sure, it's nice to have my three older kids home to visit. Oh yeah, I love coming home. I miss having soft water. That's why I bring my laundry home on the weekend. It's so much better for my hair too, but you wouldn't know anything about that, Corey. Well, that's why my hair looks so nice and moisturized. Well, what do you know about moisturized hair? Hmm. Well, having two older sisters and a brother who only showers a couple times a week helps. Well, actually, 72 years of treating water in Wisconsin is our family's story. You kids are pretty well versed in water. So let us make your family's water better today. Most senators couldn't tell you the cost of a gallon of milk. Thanks, Ruben. Or how much beef is going up this year. But I'm not like most senators or any of the other millionaires running for Senate. My mom was a teacher and my dad worked third shift. I know how hard you work. And I know that by bringing manufacturing home, we create jobs and we lower costs. If we want to change Washington, we got to change the people we send there. I'm Mandela Barnes and I approve this message. This portion of News Watch 12 is brought to you by Slumberland. In November 2020, the Packers made left tackle David Bakhtiari the highest paid offensive lineman in NFL history. Since then, injuries have plagued the career of the Packers star, only playing in one game since tearing his ACL. Now, after three surgeries, Bakhtiari says the ACL isn't the issue, but he continues to have knee issues. With Packers training camp starting today, he was not out on the field. He did meet with the media, though, and gave us an update on what he thinks when he thinks he'll suit up again. When I'm ready, I'll be out there. And uh, what I can say is I do feel really good. I really like, I feel normal. My knee feels normal, and that's the biggest plus. Now it's just getting that normal feeling again when I play football. Bakhtiari wishes he was back on the gridiron, but his body isn't there yet. He gives us the next steps of achieving his goals and playing football again. Strength, load, um, not only uh, physically, but physiologically just getting the, the knee joint to handle different stresses, different loads, and just getting it to uh, play football again. So that's just slowly, slowly chipping away. Both Bakhtiari and Coach LaFleur said there's no timeline on his return. The first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic now has a statue inside the U.S. Capitol. The Amelia Earhart statue was unveiled this morning during a special ceremony. Earhart was just one of 11 women to join the National Statutory Hall collection inside the Capitol. The collection is made of two statues from each state and Earhart was cho chosen by the state of Kansas. It took artists seven years to create the bronze statue. We'll stick around, we'll be right back. I'm Deb Baldus McGrath, and someday when my grandkids ask what I used to do, I'll tell them how I was the only woman in my Army jump school. The guys thought I'd chicken out. I was first out the door. After serving as an Army officer and in the CIA, I'm running for Congress because of the sky-high cost of everything. Wisconsin needs a representative who thinks for herself, works with both parties, and fights for women's rights. I approve this message because sometimes it takes a mom to get things done. Menards has the products you need to tackle any job, big or small. Shaw has the perfect floor for your home. From soft and luxurious carpet to waterproof vinyl plank flooring and durable laminate. All Shaw flooring is 11% off. Give beautiful color to your projects with Minwax Wood Finish. Minwax is a penetrating stain that enhances all types of wood. Minwax stains and finishes are 11% off at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Follow the path through the beautiful gardens to the lakefront at Pirates Hideaway. Enjoy ice cream on the sky deck overlooking the Eagle River chain of lakes. In addition to offering cruises on the pirate ship, Pirates Hideaway has a full bar, outdoor yard games, wood fire pizzas, appetizers, and more. Enjoy relaxing summer evenings with live music on the beach. Pirates Hideaway in Eagle River. Stop by and experience one of the most unique lakeside family attractions in northern Wisconsin. Visit EagleRiverPirates.com for information. 
High Point Sand and Gravel provides high-quality riprap, sand, and screened topsoil for almost any need. The high-quality rock and stone, boulders, and clear stone enhance the function and beauty of your home or business. Offering convenient delivery or pickup throughout northern Wisconsin and the UP, High Point Sand and Gravel provides premium landscaping materials specializing in producing beautiful decorative stone for all types of landscaping projects. Contact High Point Sand and Gravel to help make your next project a dream come true. Oh boy, would you look at that field goal he kicked right there! That looks fantastic! Boy, it looks like you need to stop at Tomahawk Furniture and Gun! Furniture and Guns? Great prices! Recliners, sofas, mattresses, and guns! All right, so we got some cooler temperatures today. Our average is supposed to be close to 80 degrees, so lots of 70s and even some 60s just north of us, and that means those rain showers are coming down and really cooling things off across the area. Not looking like much, just some scattered showers, maybe a thunderstorm or two. If you're caught in one, don't worry, it will not be a long lasting event. More on the scattered end, some more showers still lingering closer to the border of Canada. Those will be here by tonight and into tomorrow, and then we finally start to warm up and look really nice for the weekend. And by next week, temperatures look pretty good into the 80s. Thank you, Conrad. Well, that's all the time we have. We'll see you back here at six.